The queen moves to g5 just to put it in a somewhat better position. The idea is I pressure the pawn at e3 so that white has to devote some resources to defending it. At the same time, the queen can get to the h-file and support the attack. This move is pretty much necessary because it releases the pressure at e3 and more importantly doesn't allow me to push my pawn up at some point as a sacrifice to open up the line for the bishop. It's a rather minor task to be taking the full attention of a whole rook but then that's the price white has to pay for some weaknesses in the position. I get ready to bring my other rook over to help uh, on the h-file and Gervich again correctly is playing on the queen side. I open up the h-file and bring the queen over and now the question for white is which piece should go to f2. If the king goes to f2 then there's nothing more to be accomplished on the h-file and white can eventually just play rook to h1. So the correct plan, which he didn't play, was king to f2. Now after queen h2 for example the queen sacrifice is forced and this is not bad for black in fact after the queen avoids being skewered the other rook gets opened up and now this should be a draw for example queen e7 check and then this is played to deflect the rook to c1 so that I can go and play on the queen side and now of course there are just checks forever so that would be a draw instead Dimitri put his queen on f2 and this is the first serious mistake of the game but it's the only mistake that's necessary because now what he probably hadn't considered was a roundabout attack and this is what makes the game particularly interesting to me. Um, I'm not going to make any progress on the h-file. What I need to do is open up a line on the queen side and bring in a rook on that side of the board. And white is pretty much powerless against this plan because the rook at f4 is trapped and so I'm playing with two rooks and he's playing with one. So I played this which is I think my best move of the game preparing to open up the queen side, trade a pair of rooks, bring my other rook in and finish him off. Now if he had understood that plan he probably wouldn't have captured. The, he should have tried to keep things a little bit more closed before he captures and at least provoke another weakness. So the best move in this position would be to play the rook to b1 because that way if black captures white captures at least has the threat of bishop takes d5 or rook takes d5 as well as rook takes b7 with check and then retreating. So the black could play b6 to avoid that. Now there's a serious threat of capturing on b5 but then white would capture and now pick off the pawn at d5. I get the seventh rank but after the exchange of queens I don't see any way that black is going to win this um, because white covers h1 and has a rook on the first rank covering all the queenside squares. So even though the rook at f4 is doing nothing, there's no real way for black to make progress here. And of course, white's much too tied down with threats of checkmate to make any progress himself. So, Dimitri captured. And this is not as serious an error as queen f2, but it's a strategic error. We exchange, and now there's no way that he's going to stop me from getting my rook to b8 and coming in. He tries to activate his own queen with queen to e1, but he might have considered queen to c2 instead, followed by king to f2, and now black can probably take some time and retreat the queen to h8 and then c8 and a6 or something like that and uh, start playing on the queen side. Neither bishop has much to say in the position. That might have been a better choice than queen e1 because the idea here is to get the queen to b4 or a5 
but after rook b8, there's no time for that. If the queen comes out, then there's the devastating rook to b1 check. So, the threat is rook to b2, it seems, and therefore a4. However, my intention was to go to b3, if possible, because I want, again, to target that pawn at e3. I know that this move doesn't seem to make a lot of sense at first, but it's just a matter of tying white down, and in fact, white has just run out of moves, pretty much. White can't abandon the first rank with the queen, but at the same time, the queen has to protect the pawn at e3. And he decides that he should just allow me to, uh, well, I guess, open up, open up the game and, and get my pieces into play. He might have tried queen to c1 here, which is the passive way of doing it, and just shuttled the queen between e1 and c1, but the problem is that he still drops an important pawn, and I've still got the pressure on e3. And he just doesn't have enough time to get to e7 and start some sort of perpetual check motion, because he gets mated by force. So, he could have played a5 and just sat on the position, but then I can just waste a move and he's going to run out of moves. I'm just going to come back to b3 or get to b2. And because of that, he decided the only thing he could do now is retreat the rook. And this looks like a good move because there are threats of things like bishop takes d5. But the problem is that that rook had a purpose, and that purpose was to stop this. Now, I'm threatening bishop to d3 check, so I'm also threatening rook to b1, and the only move that defends against both is rook d2. Now he would take the bishop, at least as a sacrifice if he had to, or, or on the bishop check he can afford to move up, and there's nothing much I can do immediately. But he could also drop the rook back to d1 though that would cost him the pawn at g3. However, in this case, I finally win that weak pawn. Remember, I've been pressuring it all game, even though the pressure looked completely useless. And now, to survive, he has to try queen f2, but then I just grab his g pawn. Now I'm two pawns up. The queens are off the board and there's no more checkmate, but the problem is that his bishop now gets entombed and I'm eventually going to win that bishop. He resigned after I played bishop d3 check because if he had played on with king e1 I would have just played the obvious check and now instead of trading the bishops I could just retreat my bishop and then I'm going to win his and there's a cute line here which is this rook check as a sacrifice because I would win on the exchange he'd have to give up the rook for the pawn. So this was my first upset of Dmitry Gurevich, and this set up an interesting rematch a few years later in San Francisco.